Hello, welcome to today's very special online service. Today is Pentecost Sunday, the day when the church remembers God giving his Holy Spirit to those first disciples, the day that in a sense the church was born and since that day the world has never been the same. And it's also the end of the bank holiday weekend celebrating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee and her 70 years of service to God and the country. And of course here on the Isle of Man it's Mad Sunday and the beginning of the TT race week. And so we'll be praying for the safety of everyone here on the roads and also um, thanking God for the Queen, her service and praying for her as well. So all that to come. <laughs> but last week I promised an update on the chicks and you'll be pleased to know that um, at the time of recording this on Friday we have two happy healthy little chicks. Um, Mum is being very protective and they are being pretty elusive. Number two hatched pretty late on and we only saw her for the first time this morning but she made it out of her egg. But the fact that some of the eggs spent a bit longer out in the cold than they maybe should have done might have delayed their progress. So we might yet see some more. Maybe <laughs> we can keep hoping. It's been a great reminder to keep holding on to God's promises. You now sometimes our faith can waver and we can doubt the promises that God has spoken. And this sometimes can delay their fulfillment. I heard it referred to as being a bit like a tortoise walking along and then our head kind of goes in the shell and we stop and at any point we can ask God to help us and give us the faith that we need to see it through and we can carry on where we left off and one day we will celebrate the victory and the fulfillment of those promises but to do that we need the Holy Spirit working in our lives and he is the theme of this week's service Living the Christian life can be hard, but it's so much harder if we try to do it in our own strength. God never intended it to be that way. Last week in our real live church service, we thought about Jesus' ascension and how 40 days after his death and resurrection, which we remember and celebrate at Easter, the disciples watched as Jesus was taken up into the clouds to heaven where he now sits at the right hand of God the Father continually interceding or praying for us and it's amazing to think that Jesus God himself part of the Trinity the Father Son and Holy Spirit is actually praying for us he is one mighty prayer warrior to have on your side but more than that he promised his disciples before he left them, that he was going away so that he could send another comforter or helper, the Holy Spirit, who is the third person of the Trinity. And it's important you remember that he's not a force, but he is a person. And the disciples needed him to fulfill their God-given mission. And so do we, if we're to live life effectively for God in our day and in our generation. And this was brought very clearly to mind recently when we were having a lot of trouble with our power tools. Um, most of you will know that we have a rather large garden here, um, plus a field to manage. And as the grass started growing with a vengeance these last few weeks, mum has been continually commenting on how much we need to get the power tools working to get the job done. And what can take an age and be very tiring by hand can be made a lot less strenuous and can be done a lot quicker and more effectively when we use power. Um, let me give you an example. So here is the mission that we have. Just look at the state of the grass. It's just growing like crazy at the moment. And uh, this lot all seems to have just sprung up again in the last few weeks or so. And here I am trying to tame it by hand. And what I did here was only scratching the surface, but boy, was it tiring. Another job that we needed to do was chopping logs for the fire. And again, by hand, this is a long and very tiring job, but the chainsaw makes light work of it. And I think secretly Mum rather enjoys using it too. The mission that Jesus gave his disciples 
was a little more important than cutting the grass or chopping logs. And we can find it in Matthew 28, 18 and 19. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is a mission to bring the hope and healing and the freedom Jesus offers to the world. God wants to be part of people's lives, to be there to love them and support them. He wants to heal them and set them free from all that the enemy has used to trap and ensnare them and to keep them prisoner. This is what God wants to do, but we, his church, are his hands and feet in this world. It's most often through us that people experience God's love and through our prayers that people are healed and set free from the bondage of Satan. This is a major mission and a major responsibility, but while God does need us to play our part in it, it's not our sole responsibility. It's the job of the Holy Spirit working through us that brings the transformation to people's hearts and lives. He is the spiritual power tool that we need to complete the job effectively. God desires that we are holy as he is holy and that we're his witnesses in the world we can't do that in our own strength. It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit working in us, um, producing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Things like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. It's the Holy Spirit who brings God's words in the Bible to life as we read them. He was the one who inspired all the different writers of the Bible over the years as they sought to record what God was doing and saying in their days, so that what we have today is so coherent and fits together so well. When we read it with the author, it makes so much more sense and becomes so much more real, because through it, God speaks to us directly and into our specific situation. It's by the Holy Spirit that God can be with us at all times and not just with us, but in us, strengthening us, comforting us, enabling us to live God's way. He is the one who gives us wisdom in the decisions we make, guidance in which choices to make, warns us of potential pitfalls ahead, prompts us to share words of encouragement and comfort. It's through his power that when we pray for the sick, people are healed and that many who suffered with many forms of addiction, have been set free. And it's the Holy Spirit, the Bible says, who prays through us when we don't know how to pray. With sighs and groans that are too deep for words. And all this is just scratching the surface of what the Holy Spirit does and why, if we're Christians, we so desperately need him in our lives. But the worldwide church often hasn't valued the gift or the person of the Holy Spirit as much as it should have. A lot of times we've reduced Christianity to a mere religion, a set of rules, regulations and traditions when God intended it to be so much more. God desperately wants us to not just know about him, but to know him. He wants the precious gifts of the spirit to be at work in the church and the world. And yet we, again, talking about the church as a whole worldwide, have tried to box God into what we feel is logical and comfortable. Meanwhile, the world looks on and sees a church that appears weak and powerless, even boring, and has decided that they don't want to be part of it. They're in a sense seeing a man-made church and they're missing out on so much. That church is not the church that Jesus founded with those first disciples and I believe that it's not the church that God really desires. God is real. He's bigger and more powerful than we could possibly imagine. I believe he wants to meet people's needs. He wants the church to be alive and full of people who really, truly love him and don't just go through the motions. He wants every Christian to have a real, vibrant, life-giving, life-transforming friendship with him, to experience him as their perfect father, he wants healings and other miracles to be a normal part of Christian life. But in order to see this happen, we have to let him out of the box. For some, 
Their preferred style of worship may be more traditional, for others more modern, but the heart of whatever we do needs to be God's Holy Spirit. He is the fuel that motivates us and keeps us going. When it came to cutting the grass, we had one big problem. We had tons of grass that needed cutting, but when we tried to get the mower out at the start of the growing season, it wouldn't start. It was trying to fire up, but it just kept spluttering and stopping before the engine could properly get going. So we investigated further and found out that in the shed over the winter, mice had been nibbling away at a rubber fuel pipe. Why they like rubber and foam and plastic so much, I really don't know, but they seem to love it. And uh, we've had several occasions where they've nibbled through bits of equipment. But um, the problem seemed to be that no fuel was actually getting through to the engine. So we bought and fitted a replacement part, which we were convinced would fix the problem. But still we had no joy. And this is where the wonderful Adam stepped in to help us. Some of you will have met Adam at church while he's been visiting the island and despite having plenty of jobs to do of his own, he was determined that he wanted to help us to get this thing going. And when I said last week that in this week's video we would be trying to fix a mower, uh, I had no idea just how in-depth my mower repairs were going to be. I imagined that we would just be replacing this part, <laughs> but no. <laughs> Yesterday, with Adam's careful instruction, Mum, Dad and I learned how to remove, clean and replace a carburetor. <laughs> Inside that, we found all sorts of things. Just look at the gunk which had built up from the petrol residue. Adam gave it a very good and careful clean because when it comes to parts like this, cleanliness is everything. And then we put it back and that was the moment of truth. Would it work? Well, I'm very pleased to tell you that yes, it did. So now I look forward to being able to get to work and get that grass cut at last. So thank you very much, Adam, for your help if you're watching. Um, I've learned an awful lot about um, the mechanics of lawnmowers, but I was also reminded that like we need the fuel of the Holy Spirit to power our lives, we don't just um, get filled up once and that's it. Our tank needs to be kept on being filled and our battery keep being recharged. The Bible talks about rivers of living water flowing out from us to others and that is referring to the Holy Spirit and what flows out needs to be replaced to enable us to keep going and working at our greatest potential. Going back to the river analogy, rivers that are constantly flowing are healthy. They're full of life. Fish and birds and other creatures thrive there. When a blockage comes along or the river dries up and is no longer flowing freely, the water becomes a stagnant pond and it's no longer clean and pure and life-giving. And this is a picture of how our lives can become if either there's something preventing the Holy Spirit from flowing through us or we're not allowing it to flow out of us to others. Seeing that carburetor full of gunk reminded me of the need for purity in our lives. If we feel the Holy Spirit isn't really flowing effectively through us, we don't feel as close to God as we have done in the past, we're not seeing the answers to prayer that we long for, or our times of prayer and Bible reading seem dry or uninteresting, then maybe it's time to ask God if there's something clogging our carburetor. This is as simple as praying something like, God, I want to experience more of your Holy Spirit. I want you to work through me and I want to know you more. If there's anything in the way, please show me what it is. And if there is anything, God will bring it to mind. If there's someone you need to forgive, ask God for his help to begin to choose to let go of the pain and forgive them. If he shows you something that you need to confess to him, then just say that you're sorry and trust that, as the Bible puts it, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we feel that we've not valued the Holy Spirit as much as we should have, or we've stifled what he's been able to do through us 
by resisting change or trying to contain him, then we can ask for forgiveness for that too and ask God to give us a fresh passion and renewed sense of purpose. You get the idea. If you ask, God will show you what's relevant to you and how you can move forward with him. And that brings us to the end of this week's lesson from the life of the Price family. I'm now going to hand over to Dad, who's going to lead us in a time of prayer. Almighty God, on this day of Pentecost, we remember the empowering of those first disciples with your Holy Spirit. We pray that you would visit your church again with an outpouring of that same Holy Spirit. Empower us, Lord inspire us so that we may change the world in which we live as they change theirs. Heavenly Father, at this time of celebration we give you thanks for the loyal service and steadfast faith of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. Her 70 year reign has seen many changes but her faith has remained constant and this has shone forth as she draws wisdom and guidance from you by your Holy Spirit. May we too follow her example and may you continue to bless her and on this mad sunday and tt week we do pray that you'll protect residents and visitors alike as we travel around on the island's roads this we ask in the name of jesus amen